Hey everyone, welcome back to What's Happening. So Miss Kilmy Scott and Marie Scott did an interview at the Frank Ski Show with Nina Brown. And they talked a little bit about the show and how, you know, sometimes you find out how people really feel during their confessionals. She talked about how, you know, after completing her treatment for her cancer, how a weight has now been lifted. And basically what Jalen went through and how he felt when he found out that his mother had cancer. So let's take a listen to what they had to say. Love and Marriage Huntsville, season six on every Saturday night. Kimmy and Maurice Scott are building. Man, becoming one of the biggest of the franchise series on own Love and Marriage Huntsville. Of course, uh, Kimmy and Maurice, welcome, man. We appreciate y'all. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Congratulations on the 100th episode that just aired. Y'all are like superstars now. Listen, I never, I never, I got up, went to work, took care of my kid. Like, that's a thing. Yeah. This blessing has landed for us, and we are more than grateful. Wow. More than grateful. And a hundred at that, that's I wonderful. I thought I'd get married to a beautiful actress on TV. <laughs> yeah. I remember in the first I season. I thought y'all's courtship. Maurice, the way you came through as a whole mm-hmm. man and mm-hmm. Kimmy and all of your feminine energy, like y'all really were, I know it's cliche to say, but y'all really were goals. Yes. And especially the mm-hmm. way that the rest of the cast has panned out. Mm-hmm. Can we just say we appreciate mm-hmm. for what y'all mm-hmm. are and what y'all stand for and what y'all represent on television for mm-hmm. us? Right. Absolutely. And I concur. Like when we look at the collective, I agree a hundred percent. It was a gold mine to even be found in that in that nugget. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because so many other shows are casted and we weren't casted. We we're legitimately friends that were trying to move forward in this venue. You know? Okay. Wow. And I think that was meaningful. Like you can see the authenticity of the friendships. Now granted some of them have kind of dissolved and moved in different directions and kind of things haven't worked out for yeah. some people. Yeah. But the premise of the show was all six of us were friends. Relationship, the intimacy of it, like, has it changed the dynamics of your relationship for better or worse? I think that things change because you get a chance to relive the same uh, history. And then you get to see what people say behind uh, closed doors. So when they have those clips that pop up and you're like, oh, so that's what you thought about that. You know, then you get a chance to relive it. So sometimes uh, things that you work your way self work uh, yourself past, Mm -hmm. you know, those are things that you get to relive. And I don't think a lot changes. I don't think the TV show changes a lot of relationships. I think it kind of brings out what already is there. So, I mean, and that's just my perspective. I don't, because I hear that a lot. Even when we first started, some other shows, people would tell us that. They would say, be Mm -hmm. careful, watch your relationship, the TV show Mm -hmm. it is. And I think, like, if you have a firm foundation you know you can get past that stuff you can communicate through that stuff you know what i mean just don't let them set you up Oh, you get oh, set up. Don't, don't let oh, set you, you up, set girl. Up. You go get you set get up. You get set up. You get set up. So that's for sure. You just have mm-hmm. to kind of use your brain. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The same way we tell fans. You see, 42 minutes. It took us a whole week to shoot that show. That's right. So you know, kind of think your way through some of that stuff. This season, you're really talking about your um, going through breast cancer. And you're sharing that because that's so important to you to be able to do that to a national audience. And how scary was it in real life? It was was extremely overwhelming. Um, Just to, I guess the most overwhelming was when I found the time frame, waiting on the test and waiting on results and waiting on the wait, the anticipation of it was probably the most overwhelming. Mm. Um, And to be fair, I asked production to give me a minute to kind of, you know, wrap my head around it. And they did. Um, and so I was grateful for so that. many people reach out who hadn't had a mammogram in a while, got one. Some people found stuff. Some people didn't. Some people were happy. Some people had not so good news. And it's been wonderful. Anybody who knows me, I'm a touchy feeling. Yeah. We were this time last year. Honestly, right. we were watching the finals basketball at home, sitting on the bed, watching football. And I was basketball. doing. Yeah, basketball. Sorry. <laughs> and I was doing my thing. And I was just like, and I was like, mm, that feels like a lump. And wow. I was like, wait a minute. And I literally, I say, yes. and he got in there. He was like, yeah, it is. 
Because he said, call the police tomorrow and get that wow. checked out. It was stage two? Um, They grade it by the size. Okay. And so if it's anything bigger than two centimeters, okay. then it's a stage two. Okay. However, mine's were not. The dilemma for me is that I had two lumps. What? Oh. I didn't just have one. And so that's what technically kind of carried me over to a stage two because I had two lumps. I had one in my breast and I had one in my lymph node. <gasps> under my mm. Wow. Mm. So technically they said it's a 1B or 2A. They kind of grade me on the curve okay. because both of them were less than two centimeters. So I finished chemotherapy December the 5th. I had wow. surgery December the 20th and my last radiation treatment was April the 13th. Wow. Oh, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So, Amen. a lot of weight has been lifted um, for me, for my babe, you know, just our house trying to maintain consistency, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so a lot of things are how, in a better place. I'm, I'm going to ask how it was for Maurice as a husband, but what about yeah. for your son, Jalen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How was it for Jalen? Because I, I have a son, your son's age, mm -hmm. his name is Jalen as well. Oh, I can't imagine having that conversation with my child and they probably assume the worst when they hear we wanted cancer. to be able to give some good news with the bad news okay. you know what i'm saying so we waited on a couple tests but it was visibly you could see they were shaken oh man. you know it, especially Jalen. like when we told Jalen on that day like, i knew something was wrong i knew wow. something was wrong. Wow. he That's said my crazy. stomach hurt you know my i just wasn't feeling right yeah. and he literally right. he was like i knew something was wrong mm -hmm. um so it took him it i think a week or so before he kind of really got his mind right. He would talk to Maurice like, who's going to go to the treatments? You know, who's going to take her to this and who's going to do that? Wow. And, you know, and then we just kind of had to come up with a plan. My goal had always been for my family, my kids, just to let them see that I'm okay. Because mm. I felt like that was a big thing for them to see I was I was okay. Part of my plight was helping them yeah, get you, through you, what I was getting you're through. You're strong, sis. Super <laughs> yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah super, super strong. Super strong. Wow. Man, now I see the dynamic, why it works so well for you guys. Congratulations. Thank, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Super power unit. Yay. So it's nice to see uh, Kimmy and Maurice doing well, but sound off below you guys. Let me know what you thought about what they had to say. And I thank you all for watching and listening, and we'll talk to you in the next video.